the Allo Did You One signature comes in a clear perspex case or black perspex case. I actually prefer the clear version as you can be a kind of peeping Tom into the electronics. It's an inexpensive streamer, you can use it to play music from a network drive attached to your router or you could use it to stream music services such as Tidal, Quobar, Spotify. So it's going to send the digital music to your hi-fi from its digital output connections and on the top there are two of them. You get an RCA type digital output connection which is the standard type you'll find on hi-fi and is a coaxial type connection. Also a BNC coaxial connection which is similar but you have to lock the cables connector onto the Digi1's plug. Obviously it's outputting a digital signal, so that's ones and zeros, and they need to be converted to an analog sound, which you can hear. And obviously that's what the rest of the hi-fi does, and it's digital to analog converter. But this Digi1 signature exists in the digital domain. It gets signal off your router via ethernet and spits out digital to your hi-fi. It's based on what's called a Raspberry Pi, without an E on the end, I should add, because if you put that into Google, you'll get an entirely different set of pictures. But it's a microcomputer, which could be had for tens of dollars, and they work with a computer screen and an Ethernet connection, so you'd normally hook an HDMI cable up to them. Also, they have a tiny micro SD card, which runs the operating system. In the Digi1 signature, there are three boards, a bottom Raspberry Pi board, there's a middle board called a hat, and finally a top board with the digital outputs we talked about. Alu have obviously designed the top board to make the sound of the Raspberry Pi better. It's only going to receive digital via its fixed line Ethernet connection to your router, as there are no Wi-Fi aerials and it can't receive its digital data wirelessly. So the digital goes into the bottom Raspberry Pi board from your Ethernet via the fixed line Ethernet cable, passes up into the middle hat board by the riser pins, and then from there it goes into the top board. They're kind of connected together in a kind of Big Mac configuration. When the digital gets to the middle hat board, it's in a form called I squared S. In I squared S, the digital music data and the data that deals with the signal, which is the timing data, are on separate lines. They have to be conjoined into what is called an SP diff signal. In other words, the timing data and music data are sent on the same line. Sony and Philips decided to do this in the 80s when they designed the CD player, hence the SP in SP diff standing for Sony and Philips. You can find some DACs with I squared S inputs, but SP diff is still the most common type of digital connection. Obviously, a low have to stay with the market. Because the PI board has four USB inputs, you could put music onto a pen drive on your computer and then plug it into one of the USB sockets. I'm using a cheap 32 gigabyte Kingston USB drive. Normally the Pi will use its own USB power by the bottom USB power input, but in this case we do things differently. Power comes top down from the clean board. Because they are isolated from one another, electrical noise doesn't pollute the top board. That's the final stage in sending music into your hi-fi via its digital outputs. This is why the top Allo design board is called the clean board. This board uses two power supplies in the form of USB-C connectors, which look like these, by the way. The clean side power supply supplies power to the top clean board, and the other one supplies power downwards to the hat and PI boards. You can either use wall wart type power supplies, which use switching mode power supplies. These introduce noise and this noise can find its way into the audio and make audio unpleasant. Not always the case in some systems, but it sometimes can be. The easiest way to understand them is that the power has to switch on and off to achieve the correct output voltage. But in doing so, it creates high frequency noise and that's what's so damaging to audio. Linear power supplies don't do that and are often a better alternative. In this review, Allo provided me with their own linear power supply called a Shanti, which I've tested with the Digi1 signature. All of this might sound a bit too techy, but it need not be because the Digi1 signature is actually quite easy to use, and it's to take what is basically a simple computer in the Raspberry Pi, pimp it, and approve on the sound that would otherwise be possible by using conventional mass market streamers from well known brands. You could think products like the Sonos Connect at £350. 
which incidentally is on its way out, or something like a £350 Denon Heos Link HS2. Both of these products are more expensive than the Digi1 Signature, by some margin. It's actually quite easy to use and can appeal to both the techie person and layman alike. I'm not particularly techie, I persevere, and it was easy for me to use. The bottom PI board does have a micro SD card for the operating system, remember, and when you buy this product, you can spec it with a different operating system, which is in accordance with the computer or tablet music interface that you'll use to access your music. Don't worry about having to install all of this because Alu do all of this for you before you buy it. The one I had came with a system called Volume.io, which is a free web browser based music player. What you've got to do is type in Volume.io into your computer's web browser and you can then start accessing the music on your music storage drive attached to the router or add in your streaming services. Once you've got the player up and running on your browser, you can use an app on your tablet or smartphone to control your music player. That cost me £1.99 on the Apple Store. But if you want to add streaming services to Volume.io, you have to subscribe to the Volume.io service, which costs €30 Euros where I am. The other operating system stroke music players that you can use for the Digi1 signature are ones called Diet PI, Mood or Max2 Play. If you want to use it as a Rune streamer, you can. It's recognised as a Rune streamer or what Rune will call an endpoint in the Rune software. But you have to have Rune operating, obviously, on your network to do all the Rune processing. Rune is, of course, customizable music software that's probably the best out there at the moment for accessing and searching music. The $350 Yamaha WXC50 is a streaming preamp, so it does the same job as the Alu. It has a fixed Ethernet input from your router and an RCA digital coaxial output to your hi-fi, just like the Digi1 signature. But obviously you can also get the digital from your router via Wi-Fi, but it's a pre-amplifier too, so it can be used to send a pre-amplified signal to your power amplifiers for sending on audio to your speakers. I've got to say though, it's a bit easier to set up than the Digi1 signature, because Yamaha obviously exists in a more commercial space and are catering for those who would struggle with even the basic hi-fi setups. They've obviously spent loads of money on achieving this as well. But as I think I've alluded to, the Alu is not exactly tricky to set up if you persevere, and I'm reasonably techy, but not massively so, and it was okay for me to set up. A lot of people talk about junk in, junk out. If you send a poor signal to your headphones or hi-fi, then they can only sound as good as that signal. This idea came about when vinyl was in its heyday, before the advent of CD. This is true and... Can't argue with the truth. This is very true but it's also not true. It's true in the sense of analysing the finer details between audio file streamers and budget ones but at the same time it's not true because most streamers are pretty good and it's more of a case of what DAC you put that streamer into more than anything else. Also is it not stating the obvious that speakers and amplifiers do more of the sound than anything else? So any kind of notion that there's a big disparity between streamers in today's market on this junk in, junk out mantra is, is just not true. 
it just wouldn't be right because they mostly all sound good. So in reviewing streamers, you've got to pick out the finer nuance points between different streamers. When I use the Shanti power supply with the Digi One signature into a headphone system comprising a Cord Cutis DAC, JDS Labs Atom headphone amp, and Hi-Fi Man HE 1000 version 2s, the sound was ultra smooth. Loads and loads of refinement and tonally really, really thick sounding. I've got to say though, treble is a little bit recessed, but if this ultra smooth type sound is your thing, then the Digi One Signal with the Shanti works extremely well together. Much, much smoother than the Yamaha, which in comparison is brighter with treble. It's also sharper too. What I'd say about the Yamaha is that it just has this open spacey sound, which is a little bit unpleasant. It's a bit like someone breathing in your ear as opposed to someone keeping stum. I've got to be honest and actually say I found better sound quality using the linear power supply on the clean side and a switch mode power supply or battery supply on the other side. Often you'll just find it's a question of balance as to whether a linear power supply is better or not. That's the way I tend to frame it and what I normally find. And it means that not always is using a linear power supply better, better in inverted commas. For me personally, I found the Shanti was good, but it definitely wasn't as good using both of its supplies. But what I would say is that it's definitely a modest priced and good addition to the Alu Digi One Signature. I also tried the Digi One Signature's RCA digital output into a ultra premium DCS Bartok headphone amp and DAC. You could tell the bass is lazier and the noise floor is higher in this configuration using the Digi One Signature. But this isn't a criticism of it, it's just that the DCS is showing off all its flaws. Now obviously these products exist at different price levels with different performances, but it goes to prove my point as I made earlier that mostly all streamers are good. There is therefore no urgent need to spend loads of money on a streamer. And I use the word urgent because it's much more important that the DAC is better. In other words, in streaming products, there is a much higher level of diminishing returns than there is in other products in the chain, your speakers, your amplifiers, your digital to analog converter. What you tend to find is that some audio files will diss streaming because they're using a streamer that doesn't have a very good DAC and their CD player tends to have a DAC that's better integrated. So their opinion then becomes all streamers or streaming isn't very good. So my recommendation is therefore that if you wanna get into streaming, don't go out and buy a really expensive streamer and route it into a modest DAC. Get yourself something like an Alu Digi One Signature and route it into a much better DAC and you'll get so much better sound quality and performance. By the way, I'm gonna be testing this streamer with a DAC from Musical Fidelity soon, the MX DAC. Follow that type of advice and I can guarantee you that you will not be dissing streaming in the future. So you don't need to go out there and buy reel to reel tapes like they were trying to sell people at a hi-fi show I've just come back from. Just get yourself a good streamer and it's all you need. What I would say is that if you're into streaming already and you've got a Rune server, then the Digi One Signature makes a great Rune endpoint. It has great performance with a modest price tag. Now in this review, I'm not going to lay claim to the fact that the Digi One Signature beats, beats again in inverted commas, every streamer in a commercial space like the Sonos Connect or the Blue Sound Node because I haven't tested them side by side. But I wouldn't be surprised that if you did, 
the Digi One signature would be right up there considering how good it sounds. I've got to admit that Volume IO isn't anywhere near as good as the app interfaces you'll find with products like the Sonos Connect or the Blue Sound Node, both of which I've tested. I must admit too that I didn't try the other music app interfaces that you can use with the Digi One signature, but where you're getting benefit in using this product is on its sound quality. So if that's important to you, it's definitely a reason to buy this product over mass market produced streamers that have good app interfaces but are perhaps compromised sonically. If you use Rune with the Digi One signature, then of course that's not an issue because you're effectively using a third party interface. So I'd say definitely it's a low, a low with the Digi One signature and it's recommended by me.